喜欢吃火锅的。不然呢？<笑><笑>
e ko te mautāra ki te ure toa kāre re wai o ta au e kai nā ki ki kai kore macho ki te rawa ki hia Alright folks, uh, no mai haere mai ki ngā mua pai a tāne o welcome here to our Kiwi Conservation Centre. Now Kiwi birds are native nocturnal flightless birds here to Aotearoa New Zealand. Uh, back in days of old it is believed that they did have wings but they had no natural predators so over time they evolved to become flightless. Mm. This does cause quite a threat to them nowadays though as they are an endangered species and that's because of the introduction of predators here to Aotearoa such as your dogs, your coat your coats, needs. your dogs, your cats, your stoats, uh, your ferrets and your rodents, all animals that bring harm to both the bird and the kiwi, to both the bird and the eggs themselves. Um, now, so back in times of old we would have had about 1.5 million kiwi birds, however now we've only got as little as 66,000. That's why conservation centres like these ones are very important in trying to boost our kiwi populations back mm. in the wild. Here behind us you can see we do have three uh, kiwi birds within our enclosures. We've got Kiva, she's a female. We've got Kahu, he's a male. And we've got Kete Kete, he is also a male. Now naturally kiwi birds are territorial and solitary birds from birth. Uh, so unlike uh, most other birds, they don't actually hatch weak and feeble. They hatch with their eyes open and ready to rule. Uh, so after the mother will lay the egg, the father incubates that egg for a period of about 70 to 80 days. Uh, after which none of the parents have much interaction with the chick. They're there to fend for themselves. So they'll stay in their parents' habitats for a couple of weeks uh, before venturing out on their own. Mm. Now because they are territorial and have been known to fight to the death, you'll notice when we make our way inside, they are all kept separate in their own enclosures and this is just for their own safety. However, in Kiva and Kahu's case, you'll see that they're in the same enclosure. However, they've got a wall with a gap at the top separating those two. Uh, that's because we are currently trying to breed these two birds. Uh, so it's just about getting them used to being in each other's habitats and territories beforehand. Now, once they do um, breed, uh, they'll be kept here at Tapuya for the rest of their lives because here they can make it up to about 50 years old in the wild. They're lucky to make it through adolescence. So about that 12, 13 mark just because of those predators. Kete Kete on the other hand, he's actually Kiva's younger brother. Um, so even if we wanted to breed those two, two birds, we couldn't because that is disgusting. Uh, so Kete Kete is actually due to be released in the area of Aotearoa that we call the Hawke's Bay region. Before we make our way through into our conservation centre, folks, just a couple of rules. Uh, first of all, because it is currently a simulation of the night time, give your eyes a couple of minutes to adjust while being in there. Secondly, please strictly no um, videography or photography whatsoever. <laughs> Whilst we are inside our conservation centre here, uh, just because the emission of light does uh, bring harm to our birds. Um, and saying that too, if you have uh, any smart watches or anything else that emit, emits lights while we are inside, if we could just hide those ones away as well. Last but not least, uh, when we do make our way inside, if we could all please just form one single file, nice and close up to the... You don't even know what you're up to, boy. One single file, nice and close up to the glass, just so that we all get a pretty good look at our kiwi birds, and so that we're not tra uh, tramping over each other. Now, before we begin uh, our tour any further, me and Sean would just like to teach you guys two Maori words, very simple. Repeat after me: Kapai. Kapai. Thank you. Uh, now, kapai in all simplicity just means good, but if either of us asks you fellas, are you kapai or kapai, uh, all we're asking is, are you or good? You haven't fallen in a mud pool or a geyser. Uh, the appropriate response to that would also be kapai. Kapai? Kapai. It just has to be said with a bit of enthusiasm, eh? Kapai! Very yeah, beautiful, that was, that was lovely, I loved it. Um, so if you want to follow us in this way folks, please just remember in single file and no phones whilst in our um, conservation centre. Oh, it's a reunion. She's just on the right hand side, about halfway up. This is our first tour for the day, first and last. Oh, beautiful. Yep, so if we could just stay nice and close up to the glass, please. Why keep going? Oh, so you've been here all day, you've just been out hosting. Yeah. Yep.
Yeah, yeah. 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 Because they haven't got a tail, makes mm. them so rounded. Um, mm. So yeah. this one here, well, look, and this board, yeah. they, they are feathers, but it's um, more sort of here like, right. and really fine so feathers. Two, mm. And it's more like here. Yeah. Where is he? I should be at the back. Is it the last one? Corner here. They can oh, swim mm. um, if they have to cross yeah. streams or anything yeah. in their territories. They're quite strong swimmers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've only got three, you've only got three of them. Oh, in here, yeah. They, um, we've got our breeding birds outside in our outdoor enclosure. It's not open to the public, but they're very territorial as well. So they live in, you know, they don't live in groups, so they live alone or as a pair. So just in the process at the moment, pairing the first two up. Then they'll go outside, yeah. So do they have no vestigial wings at all? They do. Um, you're only about two inches long. <laughs> You're just staring at the guitar. Yeah, that's Alrighty folks, welcome here to our mud pools, otherwise in Te Māori known as our Ngāwha Uku. The pool itself is about 6 to 10 metres deep and the temperature right in the middle sits at about 95 degrees Celsius. Mm. If you're American, that is just below boiling point. I can't tell you Fahrenheit, sorry I'm not that smart. Um, the mud that's in front of us here does have both healing and cosmetic properties. So back in the days of old, our warriors would often come down to this pool after battle. They'd scrape some of the cooler mud off the sides of the mounds there and then apply it directly to any wounds, cuts or grazes. Now the composition of the mud itself acted as a band-aid or a plaster, while the heat acted as a heat pack, thus healing the wounds a lot better and a lot more efficiently. This mud here is also sent to a hospital here in Otorua, New Zealand, called the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, as treatment for arthritis patients. Uh, it's not a cure, but it's said to have eased the pain by about 60 to 80 percent. Last but not least, for centuries, our people have been using this mud uh, for beauty products and mud masks on our faces. Uh, it's said to make you look 21 again, and if you're interested in something like that, we do sell it in our gift shop. Yes, we do. Now, myself and my cousin here, we actually both started on the same day, uh, about 73 years ago. Uh, but if we can chuck some of this mud on our face every day, it keeps us looking like we're 16 years old. Hey, yeah. You're supposed to say yes. 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 Right. yes, thank you, thank you. Up high! Some water pipe. Up high. Up high. Do we have any questions at all, folks? Beautiful. Alright folks, if you want to follow us down this way, we're now going to be making our way down to the Glider Terrace.
No, it's a battery rupture. Can it even?
Alrighty guys, so uh, just to your left, uh, this is our marae, uh, the name of this marae here is Roto Fuel. Uh, now marae hold very, marae are, sorry, very uh, significant meeting places for us, the Māori people. And across your travels across Aotearoa, you'll probably drive past one or two. Now, the marae or the marae atea is actually referring to this front courtyard part here, or its full name being Te Marae Atea Tū Mātauinga, the realm of Tū Mātauinga, or Tū Mātauinga being our god of war. Now that's because here, this is where any disputes among our people would be settled, uh, whether it be through oratory uh, or through actual warf warfare itself. Mm. So when a new when a new dōpū or a new uh, visiting group comes onto a marae, um, according to our, our tikanga or our customs, they'd wait underneath the entrance there. After that, a warrior. Oh, you want to do it for me? Okay. Yep. After that, a warrior would exit the house bearing his long-range weapon or his taiaha. He'd then make his way forth to the visiting group, and there he would drop in front of them a leaf. Now, what this leaf or taki represents, it is a token of peace. If it was picked up, that meant that the visiting group come with no ill intentions, and they'd be welcomed onto the marae accordingly. If it was left on the ground, however, uh, what that showed is that they come with ill intentions and usually warfare would break out here on Tumarae Atea Tumatauna uh, or the realm of Tumatauna. Subsequently enough to that, behind you'll see our whare tūpuna or our ancestral meeting houses. This is also called the whare orongo or the house of peace. As such, uh, before, traditionally before you would enter the threshold of these houses, you'd have to remove your footwear as well as wash uh, or wash your feet if you're barefoot back in those days of old. Uh, just because the dirt and the grass of Tumatoinga should never ever be treated into the house of peace. Now you'll notice the house is adorned and ornated with carvings. Um, this is just representative of the bodies of our ancestors. So up the top you'll see his upoko or his head coming down either side of his arms and his supports. Um, the beam holding the roof together right along the top there is the tahuhu or the spine. And then if you can see just underneath uh, on the ceiling there, the what are they called? Panels going diagonally down the ceiling as representative of the rib cage of our ancestors. So every time we enter these spaces, it is very spiritual and very sacred moment for us, the Māori people. Just to the right of our ancestral house here, you'll see what we call a pātaka kai, uh, which is simply storage places for our food or our kai. You can see that it's raised off the ground and on stilts. That's to keep it away from any dampness or moisture, as well as away from any pests or other things like that that could contaminate our kai as well. If you want to follow us through this way though, folks, we'll now be taking you to our New Zealand Māori Arts and Crafts Institute. Coming this way, folks, over here. Kia horo. In the teke. Kia horo, poro. Kapai kuta. Kapai kuta. Kone te harani. Te harani. Te harani. Te harani. Kapai kuta. Te mata hia. Alrighty. Kia ora, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my heart and my kikune ki NZ Maki, or welcome here to NZ Maki, also known as New Zealand Māori Arts and Crafts Institute. Now here at NZ Maki, there are three schools. Our first being our bone and stone carving school. Our second is our weaving school. Our third is our wood carving school. <laughs> now all of our students here, they do learn the ancient art of wood carving and weaving also burn in stone carving. Now they are all taught by well-respected master carvers who are all trainees here themselves. Our schools here was founded by a man named Hune Tukauru Taiapa back in 1967. It was only 
our, our Burn and Stone Carving School, our, sorry, our Wood Carving School and our Weaving School. As years go by, that's when our Burn and Stone Carving School came about back in 2009. Now, uh, all of our students here, they are on a paid scholarship. Um, so they do get paid to come here and learn the ancient arts of wood carving, weaving and bone and stone carving. A lot of our schools here are funded by the government. It is 50-50 between ticketing, ticketing and admissions and our artwork gallery over there. So all of that money goes to our schools to help with whatever they need. Now, our students in our bone and stone carving school and our weaving school, they have a choice. They can study here for two or three years. Now, if they do wish to study here for a third year, they learn the more upskill knowledge of bone and stone carving and weaving. For our students in their wood carving school, uh, they don't have a choice. They need to study here for three years. Now, once all of our students have completed their three years of study, they graduate. Once they've all graduated, they can come back here and be tutors, master carvers or master weavers, or they can go and take their learnings uh, to their tribes, the iwi, their families, or their family. Now, all of our people in the black t-shirts, they are master carvers, master weavers, and the people in the grey t-shirts are the tutors, are the students, sorry. So yes, me and my cousin, we are master carvers. Yeah. <laughs> Now what we're going to be doing now folks is we'll be making our way up to our bonus stone carving school. Carpoi? Carpoi! We'll do that again eh? Carpoi! Carpoi! Car oh, that's better. Love that. Follow us. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of wood are you using? Hey? Is that wood? Oh, well, this is the bird in stone. Yeah. Um, so you yeah, outside of the statue. Yeah. We've got to be red pine and total. Alright. Let's have New Zealand to Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can do Keep pushing in folks. Keep pushing in folks. Alright, kia ora ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to the Tucker Pool World of Fuel. Yeah,